Hello everyone and welcome to Business and Technology Updates, making news around the continent here on Star TV Channel 21 with me, Eric Saraskawa. We start off in Egypt. Well, Egypt saw 2017 Africa Business and Investment Forum as the right platform to expand its activities with other African nations. The North African country signed up $500 million bill with Africa's Export Import Bank to support export investment by Egyptian businessmen in other African countries. Very committed to uh, regional integration at at all levels. We 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 really believe that, for, for example, uh, one key uh, concrete example is the connectivity. Uh, in terms of transportation, connectivity, connecting countries because uh, in the form of railways, for example, because that would ensure a better mobility of, of goods, services and also of, of people that will help create uh, better jobs, more quality jobs, but would also allow the mobility of, of goods which would promote uh, trade and, and investment for the continent. Now we've seen quite a number of deals come out of this conference, including uh, a $500 million uh, deal with Africa's S Export Import Bank and of course Egypt's Development Bank. What are some of the other deals we've seen uh, come out today? We have several agreements with the African Development Bank and yesterday we've also signed one with the European Investment Bank that is very much keen on also promoting regional integration because when we're talking about South-South cooperation, we're also uh, keen on promoting um, exports to other continents that are of value added. So we do not want Africa to limit its exports to raw materials or intermediate goods, but in fact we can do more value added uh, in industrial uh, clusters that would also create more jobs, but also bring on uh, in more foreign currency for the whole continent. Now in terms of Egypt's economy, we're seeing those IMF reforms kicking in. Uh, can you give us an update on that program? In fact, yesterday we signed, uh, in the presence of the managing director, uh, Kristalina, uh, the third tranche from the World Bank, which is amounting to uh, $1 billion and $150 million. Uh, the $1 billion is from the World Bank support and the 150 is a UK, uh, UK contribution out of the G7 of uh, scaling up the funds that has been allocated from IFIs. So this is a program we're very proud of. Uh, it has been uh, supported uh, not just by the government, parliamentarians, but more important by the people because it required a lot of fiscal consolidation and uh, effective targeting of subsidies and uh, we are very proud uh, that we are able to, to get the buy-in from the people knowing that this will have positive and uh, rewarding returns in the medium term and the long run. And what role do you see China playing in the future of Egypt's prosperity? Today and yesterday we've been discussing how we can move forward with Africa, our uh, African uh, brothers and sisters. We're also having uh, negotiation and discussion with also the Asian uh, counterparts, including China, uh, and we're, we're very much uh, keen on bringing their expertise, but also uh, putting our investments there. Let's go for some short commercials. We'll be right back. Always wanted to get some good IT training, but often wondered where, when, and why. Allow me to share my pleasant discovery. Situated on the outskirts of Freetown on my 91 Freetown Highway, Silicon Hills, just opposite the former Camp Charlie is the Canadian College of Modern Technology. And apart from its serene environment, which makes it most suitable for learning, this certified and accredited Canadian College of Modern Technology, with its well-experienced international and local teaching staff. We offer courses in computer science, business administration, human resource management, development studies, and mass communication. They will help you develop and demonstrate effective problem-solving skills to be successful IT professionals. You may also like to know that this fully equipped institution is not only special for its wireless connectivity and its unique waste management policy which seeks to help reduce their carbon footprint but also has a 24-hour solar electricity power supply and a backup generator this highly secured campus also has a clinic student hostels with clean running pipe bone water a canteen and state-of-the-art learning facilities to make learning a good experience enrollment for 2016 starts right away and here's a little secret for the year 2016 and 2017, 
all registered students who meet all financial obligations will be provided with personal laptops to help them with their studies. So hurry now and get your application forms or contact them on these numbers 079-630-407 or 099-140-208 or 025-343-175. The Canadian College of Modern Technology, where knowledge and hard work are the ultimate. Welcome back. You're still watching the technology and business update here on Star TV, Channel 21. After three years of construction, a Chinese built toll road has completely opened on the island country of Jamaica. The project marks the biggest Chinese investment in the Caribbean to date, and officials said there's more to come. CCTV America's Ru Rittenbach reports from the Kingston capital of Jamaica. Well, Michelle, many people here were anticipating the opening of this highway. This has been a project that's been dreamed about in Jamaica for the last half century. Uh, parts of the highway were opened in recent weeks, but at a ceremony on Wednesday marking the opening of the full highway, Jamaican and Chinese officials spoke of a new standard of coordination and cooperation between the two. Still, it might be some time before we see traffic pick up. It's been locally dubbed the Beijing Highway, a new toll road that'll directly connect the Jamaican capital Kingston in the south with the resort beach city of Ocho Rios in the north, a two-hour drive reduced to less than half, thanks to a $730 million project with funding coming from China. So as a company, we're very happy to, to, have, to have a chance you know, to provide our services to the Jamaican people. More than a thousand Chinese workers and a thousand local Jamaicans spent three years building the road, officially called the North-South Highway. Difficult terrain required creative engineering solutions. Jamaica's Prime Minister said success was possible thanks to a, quote, good, strong bond and friendship between Jamaica and China. And we intend to use those things to secure even greater investment, not just in infrastructure, but in tourism, in agriculture, in leisure and recreation, in building new cities, in water. The highway, it's hoped, will play a crucial role in helping resuscitate Jamaica's economy. It's been burdened by large interest payments to international creditors that have left little room for domestic government spending. Jamaica gave the China Harbor Engineering Company, which built the highway, a 50-year concession to recover its costs. It also gave it land alongside the highway to develop for commercial and residential use that could spell more jobs and more growth in the near future. And there's plans for more, including a new deep water shipping port. The investment amount double the cost of the highway. We have accumulated uh, some experience after 30 plus years of reform. Now we are able to share what we have with our Caribbean friends. Which is exactly the point, officials say. A partnership that, from here on out, will only accelerate. And the Chinese company here is not wasting any time. I asked some of the engineers working for them if, now that the highway has been opened, if they might uh, relax a bit and enjoy Jamaica's beach, uh, beaches. They told me uh, that they're still already busy working on the next project, a multi-platform uh, uh, project uh, overseeing lots of infrastructure changes here in Jamaica, wasting no time. Michelle? Well, it's a nice place to waste some time. Uh, Rory, speaking about the highway, there has been some disputes about toll prices. What are the details there? And you know, this uh, ceremony uh, that we saw on Wednesday actually happened at the southernmost uh, toll plaza of this new highway. It's really a very uh, uh, passionate domestic uh, issue, and it's been played out within domestic politics. Uh, some say that the toll prices that are being set by the Chinese as part of that concession, as their right to do so, uh, have been set too high that they may be off-putting for the average Jamaican whose income might be lower than what is necessary to really make use of that toll. We saw the criticism being made again at the ceremony by Portia Simpson, the leader of the opposition and the former prime minister, uh, saying this criticism in front of the Chinese uh, officials and delegates who are there. 
Separately afterwards, the Prime Minister Andrew uh, Holness announcing that in discussions with the Chinese uh, firm, uh, they agree that the tolls will be reduced by 25 percent. That's already been widely reported here and many people welcoming that news. It's not just the Jamaicans, though, that will be using that highway. We do expect an influx of tourists from the north and the south to use it as well. Let's go on for some short commercials and we'll be right back. The best investment in a child's life is education, as it educates and prepares the child for the future. But having that in a very conducive atmosphere is one thing that every child yearns for. At Nyakom Noswe Preparatory and High School, situated at number 5 Bauma of Femitono Drive, Godrich, your child's future is guaranteed. At Nyakom, we are the meet pupils from Noswe to SSS4. Striving for excellence is one of Nyakom's mission, and that is accomplished through our conducive learning environment that comes in a fenced compound, a one to one seating accommodation, trained and qualified teachers guidance and counseling units, plus a spacious playing ground which affirms the saying, all work and no play makes Jack a dog boy. At Nyakom, the creation of facilities are available for your child's relaxation and learning like baskets and volleyball courts, DSTV facility, fully equipped computer and science labs with bus services ensuring their pupils are picked up and dropped to and from school, thus guaranteeing their safety. Make haste and have your child award admitted into Nyakom Nursery Preparatory and High School, which is situated at number 5 Bauma of Femitono Drive, Godrich, as admission for the academic year 2017 and 2018 has commenced. Education is the key, remember. You're still watching technology and business update here on Star TV Channel 21. And up next now, slave actions in Libya have elicited reactions from across the African continent and the world at large. Now, the latest to add his voice on the subject is Ghana's former president, John Dramani Mahama. He's calling for immediate solutions to the migrant camps in Libya and a lasting peace in the country. The um, pictures are so horrible that um, one feels very ashamed, you know, that this can be happening in the 21st century. What is happening there is totally unacceptable. The African Union and other bodies have condemned it, but I think that we should go a step further and see how we can extricate, you know, our people who are trapped in there from the kinds of atrocities and dehumanizing actions that are being taken against them. I know that some countries are working with the International Organization for Migration to bring those young people back, and I hope that those actions can be stepped up so that we can um, uh, resolve the issues that are taking place there, but also work hard to bring the political factions in Libya together and stabilize uh, Libya. When the airstrikes started by uh, the NATO-led uh, mission uh, back in the day to perhaps uh, topple President uh, Gaddafi, the African Union had a different stand, uh, saying that no uh, uh, you know, arms-related, airstrikes-related intervention is required in that member state. After all the, uh, the happenings in the country, President Obama himself has apologized that there were wrongdoings in the Libyan intervention by the international community. Now that these things are happening, do you think the African Union should be given uh, uh, the upper hand, uh, the priority when it comes to addressing conflicts in Libya, perhaps? I, I think so, not only in Libya, but all across the continent. I think that the prime um, body um, to negotiate peace or resolve conflicts that occur must be the African Union. Of course, we require the, interna the support of the international community at times, especially with the UN, when we have to deploy peacekeepers and things like that. African Union does not have as deep pockets as the United Nations has. And so, yes, African Union must take the prime lead in terms of these things, but we will still require international consensus and support in resolving these issues. I remember when the situation in Libya uh, began, the African Union took the uh, proactive step of sending a mission in there and trying to resolve um, the issues. Um, unfortunately, they were not very successful. The rebellion from Benghazi uh, continued to spread. And it was the intervention of France and Britain, President uh, Cameron at the time, and President Sarkozy. It was that intervention, you know, using air power to 
you know, uh, attack Gaddafi's forces and all that, that eventually put the tide in favor of uh, those who were rebelling. And once they had taken over, that was all. France withdrew, Britain withdrew, and just left the chaos there for the Libyans to resolve. And today, we're seeing the result of it. But from that, this is how we draw down the curtains on today's edition of the Business and Technology Update. It's been a wonderful time having you today, and many thanks to the production team. Till then, I've been Eric Silas Kawa. Stay tuned to this.